Welcome back to the Fantasy Grounds coding extension tutorials for Morecore. This is the sixth video, and this is not the topic I was originally planning for video number six, but uh, it's a required one because it fixes up or completes some of the work that we started in video number five. So in video number five, we uh, worked on an attack roll, so it would check the armor class of the target and calculate the attack roll if there was a target and if it didn't it would work out what the minimum armor class is, was that you'd hit but the other roll was a new damage roll, a DB damage roll for damned basic dungeon damage and it would apply damage directly to the target uh, in the combat tracker if you have a target selected. It works great for the GM when the GM is rolling damage however players cannot modify the database directly themselves the only database entries that they can modify themselves belong on their character sheet so players have full ownership of their character sheet data but they don't have access to modify any other sort of data outside of their character sheets so to handle that you have to use something called out-of-band messaging and that's basically where an action that the player initiates sends the data uh, basically back to the GM and the GM's role um, actually executes the commands so the we open up the DB damage uh, string role string roll file here and the first thing that we do is we add this line here the out of band message type apply damage the next line that we have to add is on our function on init so when this script is initialized it will register uh, the the oob manager dot register oob message handler registers a handler for all oob messages with the type oob message type apply damage so when the host receives a message of that type it will call the function handle apply damage the we're going to scroll right down now to um, basically where we were we were doing all our damage uh, roles or we were applying all our damage here in the create chat message which really isn't the correct place to do it and the reason we but the reason that we did it there was uh, because we were going to add this uh, target name um, based on a check so I'm looking at this and thinking we possibly have to do put the check back on here on this next line versus target s name because we need to check that there is a target before trying to append a target name but um, halfway through this so while we're building up the message we then call send apply damage and we pass it the target and we pass it the ROA total which is the damage that was generated in earlier up from the dice roll so let's go down now to send apply damage and that's further down the page so we've got here a function called send apply damage and it's going to receive our target and end damage and the first thing it's going to do is basically check for a target if there's no target then this code is unnecessary it's just going to report the damage to the chat and no tar no damage can be applied to anything because there's no target to apply it to however if there is a target the next commands here will be executed so we've got local message OOB and then we've got the type which is OOB message type apply damage which is up here OOB message type apply damage and the value apply damage so our damage is we're going to set the out of band damage to end damage, out of band damage, end damage to end damage, and we've got our target type, target node, active manager get type and node name, our target. This is pretty much copied from core RPG. In this send apply damage function, we're just going to get the information we need and send it to the host in an OOB. We create an OOB object. Fill in the type of message and the data the host, which host will need, which is the damage and the target. 
You can only send basic type data types in the message, so we get the type and DB node path using the same methods we were before. We then send the message using com deliver. The client side, or the player's side, then continues about its business finishing writing the message. The out of bound message is then received by the host, which is the GM's session, and as we set at the top, when it receives an out of bound message of this type, it calls the handler. The handler receives the message OOB that was sent from the client, and the handle then happens on the server. When this completes, uh, it will come back to our script here where this was called, um, and it will continue to execute this, which is basically ending uh, that script. So when coding for changes into the database outside the character sheet that are initiated by a character, by a player, you need to use out-of-bound messaging. And it is a little bit confusing. Uh, you do, I would definitely suggest that you look at examples and uh, borrow code from the existing rule sets, uh, 5e, 3.5e, uh, have a look at how they're doing something similar to what you're trying to achieve, and have a look at how the out-of-bound messaging works on those. So. Um, a lot of it will be able to be pretty much cut and paste from there and just adding in your values so when we're doing our out of band stuff here we're just we're still using our variables our data that we've generated in our code um, and then we're simply applying it down to uh, in, in the right format or structure for the out of band messaging that's it for this quick video. Thank you.